Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I'm going to show you how to make this framed centre panel card or panel frame card. I'm not entirely sure. I was playing around with score lines. I've made the centre panel before. I've done them in 6x6, 5x7. I've got a playlist with them all on. But I was looking back at old tutorials and I redone this one and I cut a triangle section out of here and I shared that in the Facebook Live. And then from there I decided to gut the whole section so you created a frame. These were then additions that I added on at the end and those are my edge borders. So if you take them off, imagine they're not there, you just have this decorative cardstock which I'll talk about in a moment. When it folds flat, that size there is six by six, so it will fit into a six by six envelope. I'm going to give you the measurements for this six by six size today, but I'm gonna make a five by seven version as well, so you'll have the two to choose. But it's just a really lovely, way to really show off and frame that topper in the middle and I've used the Blossom stamps and dies from the latest or I think it, it's not the latest anymore But simply cards and paper craft magazine again I'll show you that in a moment, but it's just really really pretty so by adding your edges It does extend the width of the cards You will then need to make a larger envelope if you've got your like envelope punch boards and things like that You can and then you have space in the middle here to be able to write your message I've got some pencil lines there that I need to rub out when I just finish off the back of that but again, I'll just bring it up there. You can see all that beautiful detail. And it just turned into a really, really pretty card, especially with these bows on the uh, ends there. So let me show you how to make it. So this is the magazine. It's issue 215 of Simply Cards and Papercraft. There may, I think there's now a newer one out um, from this one. And there's the Blossom dies. And then there's the stamp set. So I've stamped this one here and you can see I've done all of these ready for today's card. So I just, um, I'm gonna stick a few more within the frame as well, because I did talk about that in the, the live. I've got my dragonfly there as well. So I've gone ahead and, the dragonfly's from my own stash. <laughs> some people are saying it's from the work, some people are saying it's a card making magic. Um, but it's, it's this one here, it's really pretty with the holographic card. So yeah, so that is the stamp. Like I said, I will share, as always, everything in the description box below. And then for the sentiment on this one here, I put flowers bloom all for you and that's this one here and then for this one I'm going to do hi because I just need a few more cards to send out to people so I just thought that one worked really well um, that's the dragonfly that I just spoke about and then for the edge I used my bow from my 6x6 and excellent edges but if you've got the 5x7s you can use them as well and then for the topper ovals I've used the tonic studio oval dies first of all you want to cut yourself a piece of I've got this white cardstock. So again, another thing I'm doing differently with this one is I'm using white cardstock and I'm going to make the mats and layers to go on this one. This one here, I used the free downloads from the magazine. So I downloaded the papers and then I printed one of the patterns onto 300 GSM cardstock. So that's what this is. This is um, printed straight on. So that was one option and it's really nice if you don't want to have to do mats and layers. But I just thought for people that maybe don't have the downloadable papers and they just have plain, you know, coloured cardstock and they want to add other pattern papers that they have, I'm going to talk through the mat and layer sizes. I will put the size of this mat and layer if you want to do it in the 6x6 in my blog. Okay, so first of all, sorry, I'm trying to get across the two sizes in this tutorial, so I'll be going back and forth. So this one here for the 5x7 is a piece of 9x7. And you just want to score two and a half, three and a half, five and a half, and six and a half. Okay. Then for the six by six, you will want a piece of cardstock that's ten by six, and you want to score at three, four, six, and seven. Okay, three, four, six, and seven. Really easy scoring for both of those cards. Okay, so next you want to pop your cardstock so it's uh, portrait orientation. With your ruler along the very bottom, just mark at one inch and six inches, and then on that score line, the, ne the next score line up, so one inch, is one inch and six inch, and just join those lines up. Just do it lightly so you can rub this out, like so. And then along this side, you're gonna come in one inch and along the bottom you're going to come in one inch and again just join that up. So this is going to be a slightly thinner kind of 
piece that you're cutting out so we're now going to gut this section here but I think the one inch frame if you go start going any thinner with the frames then I think you're going to start to really weaken the card however if you back it with acetate or vellum that will start to add strength again and I'll talk about that in a moment because it was something I literally just done right at the very end of the live and many people really liked that effect so we'll talk about that in a moment again on the opposite side you just want to mark at one and six and again on that first score line and just join those up and then again you're going to come in one inch and again up here just come in one inch and join those up and then again I'm just going to scribble over there now for the six by six it's exactly the same so I'll just open this up pretend I haven't got this border at the end so here's the end of my card you can see my pencil lines are already there at one and five and then I would have come along this score line here and you can see I've marked where the cut line is one and five join those up so I've just basically done these markers here joined them up down there and then along here I've come in one and come in one joined them up and you can see there I've just taken out that section so it's the same one inch um, markers but you're just working on the six by six size now, once you've done that you want to cut those middle sections out now during the live I just stabbed my scissors and just started snipping it out so if you don't have a cutting knife if you don't have a trimmer if you don't have a digital cutting machine even a die, you might not have a rectangle die, because I did also mention you could pop a rectangle die in this section, but one side of it up to that score line and run it through to cut it out. This is just a really quick, easy way, just kind of in the middle, we'll go out to all four corners and then join it up. But I'm going to use my metal ruler and my cutting knife, and I'm just gonna go around and remove those pieces where the score line section is I like to remove the score line so I'm going to take that out completely okay so those have been removed now I'm just rubbing away the pencil lines there most of the other lines have been cut away okay so now you'll see we have this shape Okay, and I did also mention as well during the live, I think you could make two of these and stick them back to back so you have kind of like a square in the middle here. You could have things dangling, you could do all sorts. But I just want to quickly mention about the vellum. So I've got this beautiful piece here. Now you could easily pop some vellum or some embossed acetate. You could turn it into shaker windows. There's so much you can do with that. So if you do want to fill that space, then what I would suggest you do is just cover that section there on the end and then just obviously you know fold fold it around um, if it's acetate then I would literally just sit it just on that side there um, so it's literally just running flush with that section with that side bit there but uh, yeah I think it's um, it's a really fun style when you cut those sections out so now I'm going to add this mat layer so this is what I didn't do with the 6x6 and I will pop the sizes for the 6x6 in my blog but this middle mat and again it's just that leftover card from the six by six so this is one and three quarters by six and three quarters and that's going to go there and then I want to make a C shape to go around these two sections here so I've cut two pieces of cardstock which are again six and three quarters but this time the width is two and a quarter and this time I want to come in three quarters of an inch along this side and then from the bottom here so just three quarters of an inch and again on the opposite side and I'm just going to join up those lines and then just on one side I'm going to come in three quarters and again down here and join that up now if you've got a directional paper then because what I'm going to do next I'm just going to pop this over this one that should be that way and I'm just going to cut this piece out now because mine's a non-directional it doesn't matter but if yours is make sure they're both up the right way now and then you'll have pattern to pattern that way when you cut this out you will have one which will be able to go on that side and one on that side 
but yeah if it's uh, it doesn't matter about the direction then you won't need to worry about that so again pop it in your trimmer if you're using a die it's entirely up to you but I'm just pinching that so my cardstock doesn't move off to one side and then I'm just going to cut this one separately just drawn a quick pencil line just to join those two up so I can follow that a bit easier there we go keep those for some other projects and now you will have two perfect matte layers for your side panels there so just before I stick these ones down I'm actually just going to place my topper and my decoration because I want a couple of them going into this area and I just think it'd be quite good to have the end underneath this cardstock so it's just kind of hidden so from the back it looks nice and neat so I'm just going to like clip it over the end and then under the rest of the flower so it kind of fills some of that space so I've got one there I'm going to have one maybe not so long and just have that just underneath the end there but the rest of it's kind of coming over and into that space and then I've got these ones here and I've popped some foam on this one so similar to how I done the one during the live I've got foam there as well so that one's going to go kind of up there and then again I've got another smaller piece which is going to go there and then I cut the flower on its own to go there and I'm thinking now actually I may have a bit more running along the top just fill this one up a little bit more and then I could always have that down there but I quite like that arrangement and I've always got that little extra there which could always come out of that corner and then my dragonfly could also be on this rather than on the topper like I did on the other one. We shall see, but now I'm kind of, I would just play around. I always like to position everything before I kind of completely commit and stick to how my mats and layers. But it's if you do want to kind of stick anything under, then I would um, I'd do it like that. Because he's then when you flip this over, it's going to be really neat on the back as well. But I'm really happy with that. I'm not going to add the edge dies to this. I just want to show you it like it is, because not everybody's going to have those edge dies anyway. And I just want you to see just how beautiful it looks, you know, as it is. Okay, so that's everything stuck down. I think it looks absolutely stunning. It just shows off those stamps so well. And then again, if you do want to back it, you can see it will still look lovely with images within that space. You can also add a strip down here if you want. I'm not going to, I quite like that white space. But again, I would do three quarters by six and three quarters. And then on the back, I've just popped one of those extra stamped images. And you can just see how neat everything is on the back there as well. So I'm just going to finish it off now with some of my, I'm going to use the Morning Dew, or was it? No, actually I used the grey, which is the grey mist, and this is the Nouveau Dual Drop. It just leaves a little bit of colour, grey colour obviously. But I'm just going to pop just a few, you could obviously put little, you know, gems here if you wanted some sparkle. But I'm just going to pop just a few, just to add a little bit of interest. I think that I do. In the centres of the flowers I just used <coughs> my gel pen here, the Jelly Roll. It's the Secura one and it's the 10, number 10. But now if I just bring that up you can see and they will dry completely clear and just leave a very slight kind of shade of grey. 
Okay, so I've just brought over the 6x6 again, just so you can see the difference between the two. I think they both look equally stunning. I really am pleased with these. I think they look absolutely beautiful. Again, I think they'd work really well for masculine makes as well, because I imagine in the topper you could have a hobby, so whether it be like a racing car or um, a motorbike or something, it could be a lovely country scene, maybe a fisherman in the pond, you know, you could stamp a lovely image in that. I just love how it's framed within that... Um, that section there so yeah hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today like i said all the other measurements for the mats and layers for the six by six will be in my blog i'll link um, the magazine and anything else that i can in the description box below if you've enjoyed today please check out some of these videos that are popping up now you might want to watch those next and if you haven't subscribed please do so and you'll be notified every time i upload a new video thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon bye